It's Frank. It's Frank, the guy that helped me out with that. Uh... Get your daily delivery. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, buddy. Let me have another tip for you. Oh, really? Hold on. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. Just got a text message from my friend Frank, the UPS guy. He strikes again. Uh, he told me that some nut dumped a push mower near this railroad overpass. And it's about three or four minutes away from my house, so I figure I'd get into my van and go see if it's still there. So he said, there's the, it's the northeast corner of it. You guys see anything yet? I don't see nothing yet. There it is, right there. Well, hey, it's a, a lawn boy with a collar. How about that? Somebody jigged the cable, but it works. Somebody jigged the bottom cable, it seems like it works. I believe this is rear self-propelled. I actually have one of these things at home. This is a Polar, I want to say XT7 actually. It's the way this is shaped. It looks like a 7, not a 6.75. Just decent, you know? Alright. Let me put it in. Lift, rear, knee. Pivot, lean back, leverage. Easy as pie. So I'm back home. Three minutes. Just let it drop all the way down. Let's just do a quick triage of it right now. It's got like almost no earl in it. Very little. Got no get and it's got some, very little. What do, you guys, what do you guys think? Should we give it a couple of booms? It's an auto choke, right? No primer. Let's just give it a couple of booms. Oh, wait a minute. I can't give it a... Oh, yeah, I can. So I'm looking for the pull start. What do you guys think? I say it does. Maybe not. I actually don't feel too much compression going on. Oh, actually, I feel it. Aha! Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at here. Spark plug is busted. See, broken. Could that be the only thing wrong with this? I mean, other than the cables, of course, being jigged, but... Right now, that's the reason why it definitely won't start. Just for the hell of it, let's go into the garage and put a spark plug in it. <laughs> and let's just see. I'm just curious myself, you know? Of course, it's the smaller one of the three kinds. Actually, there's four kinds. All right, we successfully was able to grab the broken spark plug. Sometimes if it's so broken, you can't even grab it. 
that would be a headache but looks like I've gotten it extracted now the challenge is of course so it's one of these uh, long ones you know that it sticks into the uh, engine with an inch by an inch it's RA8HC from Champion uh, now the challenge is to grab the piece that's in there Gotta get some needle nose pliers so look I thought it was one of these but look at the difference the busted one is much thinner I don't know if I have one of these I have to go look for one <laughs> you know sometimes I'm amazed at how many spare parts I actually have I didn't even know I had it I just looked and it's right there. Uh, same exact one, RA8HC. <laughs> Perfect. Now, I could just get this part out of here. That's gonna be quite a challenge, I think. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Awesome! Awesome! You guys should go play the lottery, huh? Things work out like that? Things work out like that. You should go play the lottery. Yeah, let me weasel this in there. Alright. Got the new spark plug in there. Well, new sort of spark plug. It's in there. Let's give her a couple of rips, tater chip. What do you guys think? It'll start? I think it might. Okay, it won't. Let's take the air cleaner cover off and the air cleaner, air filter, and let's spray a little bit of go go juice in there just to see if it'll start. Yeah. Not terrible, but yeah. So, you know the auto choke is working because the flap is closed. I'm spraying a little bit of seafoam spray in here just to see if it gets started. Next, let's check for sparkage. See if we see any spark here. It should be orange. Sometimes if the cable's hinky on the brake lever and you're putting the bail handle down, it's not actually going all the way in and not releasing from the ground. I got some contact cleaner for my friends over at Luke. See if it starts now. Ooh, almost. There we go. We've got some action going on over there. So, I think it's because even though it has some gas in there, gas is probably not getting to the carburetor. 
which means the carburetor's dirty. So uh, we're gonna take apart this carburetor tomorrow. So it's the next day. As you guys know, this thing starts on starting fluid only, which means that the carburetor is probably clogged and dirty and that the needle is probably seized inside the seat so that no gas from the gas tank is getting to the carburetor. However, it could be because the level of the fuel is very low. When I checked yesterday, I could see some fuel, but very, very little on the very bottom. What if I added some gas? What if this carburetor is clean and it's just, it just doesn't have enough gas? To rule out that, I'm gonna add some gas. But let's also make sure that the gas in there is not contaminated with water. So I'm gonna dump out the gas that's left inside of the gas tank so we can see the condition of the, uh oh. Oh boy, you guys see what that is? That looks like water, completely. This is water. So this thing is contaminated with water. I'm glad I did that because I would have just wasted the gas in there, you know what I mean? This gas tank is completely flooded with water, which means that the carburetor is completely contaminated with water. Yep, that's, that's completely water. I have the lawnmower tilted so that I have easy access to the bottom carburetor bowl nut, which I'm gonna loosen and check out what's inside the bowl. Because we saw gas, I mean uh, water in the gas tank, it's probably filled with water. Let's take a look, here we go. Look at this. It's all water. No gas at all. And sand. <laughs> I'm gonna fire up my air compressor and blow out the tank. I'm gonna put this plastic over the gas tank. Watch over here the ga uh, the water that spews out. Poke a hole. Not that much water is coming out though. So the uh, carburetor itself doesn't look bad at all actually. Now I'm using my finger to push up the float so that the needle seats into the hole. I'm gonna blow and I can't. I'll let go of the float and I can blow, so air is going in there and it doesn't seem to be any water in there. I'm gonna turn the straw of this carb cleaner upwards towards the emulsion tube. And as you can see, it's clear. I'm gonna clean the bowl now and replace it and add some gas and see what happens. Clean the bowl and the nut best I can. Then when I was about to install it, I noticed right around here, see that hose that's coming down? I see a crack and then I move the hose. The crack looks pretty bad. I'm not sure if that's the breather hose or whatever, but it's trashed. So I'm gonna remove this cover now so we can check out that hose. Colors are 10 millimeter.
These are the two that hold the carburetor on. It holds the air cleaner base. Dum 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 dum. That was a spacer. Yuck. This is actually the primer mechanism. The auto choke primer hose for vacuum. So the muffler the muffler gets hot, right? The muffler gets hot and when it builds up uh, enough um, heat, it'll slowly move this mechanism to the open position. As you can see, there's a lot of debris here. This mechanism over here has the breather hose that goes right through here into the area for the primer mechanism. So this needs to be replaced. We're gonna blow this area out. remove this hose and try to replace it. Some needle nose pliers. Pull this hose out. Can't see him. Too bad. Son of a bitch. Broke the nozzle. That's gonna be a problem I think. Because I broke the nozzle, I didn't have a replacement until I remembered that I took apart a Kohler XT675 a while back. And sure enough, I went into my shed and I found the entire carburetor with the primer system with a good hose. How lucky am I? Uh, so I was thinking about maybe just replacing this entire carburetor on there, but I don't think I need to. I just need this part right here, this assembly, and this piece on the front here looks like it comes off, it comes with the hose, so I'll just replace this piece with the hose onto there, it should be okay. In the meantime, there's another guy who wants to see one of my uh, lawn mowers, so I'm going to have to whip it out of here. not really deep inside. Got this listed for 175. It's a pretty good mower. He offered 150. I said, sure. I'll probably try to sell this tomorrow.
okay, I did a lot of unnecessary stuff. If I was just a little bit more careful when I took off hoses, I was impatient. So I just yanked the hose without actually loosening the hose clamp first. So as a result, I broke that little plastic nozzle that's off the primer bulb auto choke primer mechanism, where it has like kind of, kind of a diaphragm inside so that when the throttle moves, it pumps a little bit of primer in there. That's kind of important with an auto choke uh, feature, you know? So luckily I took the old one out and put it on this one, but it was too much trouble, so I decided to just remove the entire mechanism from the bracket, what you saw in time lapse. So I got it all back together again, cleaned the bowl. I just added fuel too, and it looks like it's not leaking, which is good. I'm gonna start it up now for the very first time. You think it'll start? Let's find out. about that engine runs great doesn't it so smooth that's nice however the rear self propulsion doesn't seem to work let's test it a little bit more to see if it's just the cable that's been jigged wrong or do I need to do something in there I'm gonna take some I'm gonna run it take these pliers and pull on this engagement cable see if the rear wheels spin That is if it starts again. So it looks like the cable is seized. You pull on it and pull on it and it doesn't even move. So the, the seize part of it is under there. Nothing is engaging the PTO to turn the uh, pulley for the belt to drive the, um, or to engage the uh, self propulsion in the rear. So I have to flip it on its side to see. So not only is the cable seized inside the cable, right? The wire is seized in the cable, it won't move, right? So it won't engage the gearbox to move upwards, to pull the pulley back, to tighten the tension of the belt that's around the crankshaft, right? Not only that, but the belt is not even attached to the pulley on the rear. And do you think you can get your hand in there to try to get the belt back onto the pulley? No, of course not. How else do you think you can get access to that area? It's like incredible. What am I gonna do? Drop the entire axle? Does not make any sense? Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, baby, what's going on, man? Look, everybody, it's Frank the UPS guy. Frank, say, say something nice to everybody. Oh, uh, what do you want to hear? To say, uh, yeah, it's the best. Oh, <laughs> that's that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Frank, the UPS guy, man, that's a nice guy. Henry, I gotta go. I'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook 
as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.